Welcome to lesson three. Um, last lesson we talked about holding the bow. In this lesson we will not use the bow at all because we will focus on the left hand. Now, just to explain the jobs of the hands. When you are playing the violin, the right hand is what a very famous violinist once told me, is like your vocal cords. It produces the sound. The left hand is like your lips, your tongue, your teeth. They produce the actual letters, the consonants, the vowels that turn sound into speech. It's the same thing here. This is what will make the sound. But if you only use your right hand, the entirety of what you can play on the violin is just the four open strings, meaning strings that are played without any fingers being placed on them. Those strings are the G string, the D string, the A string, which just squeaked, and the E string. Those four strings are the same notes on every violin. Of course, every violin sounds a little different, but it's still going to be the same four pitches. To make different notes on the violin, we make the strings shorter by putting the fingers down on the strings. So if I take this G string, and instead of making it this whole length from here to here, the length that actually vibrates, if I cut that length in half by stopping it, I will get a different note. In this case, the note E. The higher, meaning the closer to my face that I put a finger, the shorter the length of the vibrating string, the higher the pitch of the note. In your first steps of playing the violin, your hand will stay down here in what is known as first position, where the fingers will stop the strings from the first through the fourth finger, and the hand will not move at all up the violin. That's only at the beginning. Now, putting your fingers down on the violin is something that can be the most frustrating, the most tricky part of beginner playing because there are so many little mistakes that you can make and you have to know to watch for all of them. The ideal setup of the left hand would put the fingers above the notes so that each time a finger drops down, it hits the same note over and over. I, you can't miss. I'm going to hit the note C sharp, for example, on the A string repeatedly. I don't have to aim for it because when I, when I close my hand, as I would shake hands with you, when I close my hand, that finger will drop down on the same spot. So what beginners will often do, the first mistake, is to try and use the wrist to put the finger down on the string. You don't want to do that. You want to use this opening and closing movement of the hand to close the fingers onto the strings. To set the hand up so that the fingers close onto the strings on the right spots, there are several angles you have to consider. In the last lesson, I talked about how the thumb and second finger make a ring on the bow. They also, the thumb and second finger, make a ring on the left hand. But everything is a mirror image of one another. So on the bow, my thumb goes inside my second finger. On my left hand, my second finger goes inside the thumb, like so. There is where the hand's center ought to be felt. Basically, I know where this finger is, there, and I know what note it's playing. Therefore, I know what notes and where this finger goes, what notes and where what notes and where this finger should go for the fourth finger and so on. When you've got the ring, the question is the ring between your second finger and thumb, the question is how far up or down should you be? Simple answer, that ring will form the notes B, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp on the violin. For now, you're not playing those notes, so that's <clears throat> not entirely usable information your hand will be at the very end of the fingerboard. That is usable information. But you want to make, make sure from the very beginning that you feel your hand starts here with the second and thumb, not here with the first finger, even though this will play the lowest notes. It should feel as though if you drop a guillotine blade right here, that you could chop off your first finger and still not touch your hand. Your whole hand is ahead of your first finger. The second finger's angle places it a little bit on the corner of the finger closer to the scroll. The same is true for every finger. If you look closely, you'll notice that 
My fourth finger is tilted even more than my second. My first finger is almost not tilted, but still, if you look closely, you'll see that there is a tilt. The end result of which is that when I put all the fingers down, they are all <coughs> parallel to one another. They're all pointing roughly at my left ear. They are not pointing across the strings, nor are they pointing forwards at my right ear. You want this line, the line of the base knuckles, if you're doing everything right, you want that line to rise slightly. So at the base knuckle of the index finger, that is the height at which the hand meets the neck of the violin. The fourth finger's base knuckle is much higher than that. It is above the neck of the violin. This rising line ensures that my fingers are pointing the right way. The swing of the hand ensures that the finger's length is, they are brought to the strings without having to expend finger length just getting from their starting point to their target. Those can be summarized as triangles. You have a triangle here between the line of my base knuckles, the fingerboard, and the side of my hand. Side one, side two, oops, side three. You also have a triangle here between the fingerboard, the hand that is swung out, and let's just call it an imaginary line out here. So these two triangles, the one that is not like this, but like this, the one that is not like this, but like this, those two triangles position your fingers to fall easily onto the notes they will eventually be playing. Lesson three, after you know how to hold the bow, after you know how to hold the violin, is being able to just put your left hand at the end of the violin's neck, and if you are doing everything perfectly, if you are way ahead of me already, you should be able to drop your fingers by closing your hand as you would pick up a, a cell phone, as you would shake someone's hand. Close your fingers. If each finger falls onto a separate string, you are perfect. The first finger on the G string, the second finger on the D string, the third finger on the A string, the fourth finger on the E string. I said you're perfect. Correction. You're perfect if all of them fall onto their own strings with the back corner of the finger touching the string. Not rolled forward, not the, four, the front corners touching the string, but the back corners. Now, if you can do that, you've already flash forwarded to roughly lesson six. But I still recommend you watch the next video. See you there.